Welcome to Dasar. My name is Darshan Doshi and today we have an incredible guest with us. Darshan Shah, founder of Scarters. Welcome Darshan. Thanks Darshan for having me here. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Um so let me um let me give a quick overview of Darshan Shah and Scarters brand. You know this is part of the D2C series that we are running through. and um, d2 d2c has seen a massive and an explosive growth not just across india but across the world and so we are trying to bring bring together founders who are building interesting brands who have interesting stories to tell and share their experiences and challenges with us one such experience is the scarters brand created by darshan shah Scarters is a premium D2C brand from India which is in the lifestyle accessories sector. We're going to discuss a whole range of topics from customer centricity, uh, attention to design and detail, uh, how do you build a a, a large scale consumer brand from India for the world and funding that goes with it as well. So Darshan, my first question to you Uh, I gave a quick overview of you and as the founder of Scarters brand. But when someone comes up to you and says, "Who is Darshan Shah?" What do you typically say? Uh, well, I start by saying that born and brought up uh, in Pune, uh, very proud to be a part of this city, and come from a background where my grandfather was a doctor. He ran a hundred bed hospital in a small town called Down. and my father uh, uh, you know has been a serial entrepreneur he didn't go that way and i've seen a lot of businesses started transitioned failed succeeded so i've been in a environment where you know uh, you know a lot of businesses have uh, been grown and uh, started and uh, did my education uh, from pune did my schooling and undergraduate from pune and then i went to the uk for my masters in entrepreneurship uh, avid cricket fan uh been an integral part of my life uh played for the state uh for under 16 up to under 16 and uh, have a great passion for design and creativity so uh and now i have a family uh, uh six and a half year old son I live with my wife my parents and my grandparents so yeah that's 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 what i am <laughs> incredible um Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Parag Shah your father as well uh, had the opportunity to work with him learned a lot from him right uh, serial entrepreneur as you mentioned and you've had the privilege of seeing people in your family uh, build things create things out of nothing and you've gone the same route uh, by creating Scarters brand but you know there has been a plethora of lifestyle accessories brands uh, not just in india but around the world and so one wonders you know why would you uh, choose such a competitive um, sector to start a business so maybe what was the point at which you said i have to create this brand uh, called scarters so uh, it all started where you know i've tried a lot of things in my life uh, i gave it a shot for cricket as a part of my career uh, it didn't uh, come out as failed um, then i gave a chance for real estate uh, gave it 10 years in that uh, you know category of business didn't enjoy it uh, as much as i thought i would and uh, uh, at some point i felt that i have to build something uh, that brings the best out of me the idea of starting something from scratch and you know building something from scratch which which you are kind of uh, you know going to build something for the long term really excited me and the thought was never retail uh, the thought was never lifestyle accessories uh, i had never imagined myself to be in one uh, you know category but i was very sure that uh, you know i wanted to build something that would have that impact apple as a brand uh, you know has had a very very big impact through its products and i think at that point uh, i realized that if you get into some brand building business it has that power of impacting the world 
and i think uh, scartles was born with that uh, excitement and joy of you know creating something that would eventually give me the freedom to get the best out of me and eventually have some sort of a impact to whatever i do uh, which was very different from the businesses i had tried it started with this thought uh, quite honestly incredible and i've i've seen you you know build scarters from its early days uh, its the products are absolutely brilliant um the level of detail the level of attention that you put in is kind of seen through everything but you don't come from consumer goods background consumer products consumer brands background neither do you or have you had experience of selling online right you're coming from real estate it doesn't get any more uh physically connected than that right so uh, maybe you could help understand you know what were the early days uh what were the challenges and can really anyone just uh, build a consumer goods brand my father had one business which was retail photo which was the photo finishing lab and i remember uh, you know during my free time i used to uh, you know go and work for a couple of hours uh, standing right at the counter of a retail to understand uh, how retail operates of course the businesses at that point uh, you know were very very different and you know you just can't compare uh, you know how the e-commerce space works from an home business but i think what i learned at that point was how important uh, you know customers are and and what kind of power it has if you are able to build a business where a direct customer really trusts you and you know uh, really uh, wants to do business with you i was slightly uh, quite you know comfortable when it came to handling that direct customer the second part was when i thought of scarters i always believed that i want to directly deal with my customers i didn't want to have any b2b i didn't want to have any middleman channels and it's again starts with the long term thought of how can i build a brand that has an impact with the direct customer so i think i have worked with a certain Uh, you know i i prepared myself with certain mindsets which which helped me really you know get into the space where because e-commerce was very new this uh, style of business also 4 5 years back was not very very settled well settled in in the indian context so i think one i think i had a very very long term approach uh, to things whatever i did whatever i built whatever i started uh i always thought that is this more last and is this is this strategy more last for you know a long period of time i didn't look for you know real instant results or gratification second it is very important that you need to build a business that connects with your core strengths uh, you know so i think design and creativity whether it was real estate whether it's retail or whether it's anything that i do tomorrow i think it has to be connected with you know what what your core strengths are what you are good at uh, and and i think that kind of helps you to get up every day morning and to run to your you know work space because you've chosen something that you want to give it time i remember that you know initially uh, you know a lot of people told me that it could be a side hustle with with the kind of responsibilities or the kind of businesses i was involved with but i realized that i i wanted to give it 100% so so you know anybody who wants to start something even if it's a e-commerce or a retail brand many people feel that it could be a side hustle but it's not true you want to build something from scratch it has to become a full time activity so i i you know i i actually shut off all the things that i was doing and i said no i have to focus on something if this has to succeed so that was another you know mindset that i prepared to make sure that things work for scarters coming to the skill sets uh, you know if anybody wants to start i think uh, you know there is no limit to the ideas people have uh, you know especially today's generation they're extremely creative extremely uh, innovative in their approach but i think the biggest entry barrier or i think the biggest strength you can have to start something of this scale or you know have that long term approach uh, is is the ability to execute i think that's one thing that 
I feel that has worked for me. Uh, you know, the ability to execute what you think, dream, and you know, convert it into the reality. And I think that's been the biggest advantage or the entry barrier was of not many people able to actually <clears throat> put that idea into execution. So, so I think if if one really has this kind of a mindset, uh, develops a certain skill set. Uh, to make sure you execute well, uh, then I think you know uh, it is possible. No matter what background you come from, uh, you know, or whether you have some experience or no. And I think there's the third most important thing in this is you should know your weaknesses also, and those need to f- be filled with certain team members that need to help you. So I was very clear, you know, what my strengths are and the weaker, uh, you know. Loopholes, or I would say, where where I know I'm not good at. Um, you know, from day one I started plugging in the team members to make sure that you know gets taken care of. I think it, it kind of evolved in this manner where you know I try to bring in some sort of a structure, some sort of a focus, and some sort of a dedication to things. My next question to you is about design. I have found in all my interactions with you and what I see online with Carter's brand. you have a an absolute attention to detail to design everything that you do uh, seems to matter a lot to you so where did that come from right and as a consequence of your attention to detail what is a unique experience that your brand customers get which otherwise may not be wouldn't be there so right from a customer who looks at your you know brand to what he experiences while buying the product to the photography that is done to 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 the you know guy who's going to deliver this parcel to you and you know the the intricacies that are involved in that entire process uh it itself is a design uh, to me you know the way i have uh, worked on this platform is um you start with the end first you know and what's that expression that you want your customer to feel when uh, he you know gets a scarter's product and then to get that and to achieve that what is it that you you got to do to make sure that uh, scarter's find one slot uh, you know in every your uh, you know buyer's brain because can you uh, elaborate on that you know with an example of one of the products that you provide correct and so just what you said you know how does it actually play out talking of psychology i feel that i feel it's not a transaction so what we did at scarter was uh, delivering and buying the product and the commitments based out of a transaction are a given and that every brand on this planet has to do and will do it a brand like apple when you you love the unboxing experience you love when you touch the product you love the packaging you save it uh, when steve jobs lost his life I remember uh, I had actually felt something very very deep and a void, and I realized that it's through his products that finally he's been able to touch the customers. So at Scarters, I I kind of thought of what are the things that you know uh, I could do to make sure there is some sort of human connect that I build with my customers. So with every parcel or a product, um, you know, part of the packaging is that there is a personal note that I you know send with. Uh, you know uh, all my products um, you know it's updated every 3 months so i actually sit down and try to the current scenario what i want to talk to my customers um, you know i'm very honest in that you know it's not a marketing or it's not about the products or it's nothing to do with service it's just like a conversation that i build with my customers and i think uh, what i've been able to do is with this human connect uh, that i've been able to build along with the product You you do things that are not expected, uh, you know, and it's like gifting your wife on her birthday. And if you're able to start, you know, do five thousand, uh, you know, uh, deliveries that that create some sort of a uh, you know surprise, you are actually touching the same sentiment of every individual. And I think uh, you know, doing these small acts from you know a letter to some sort of a communication to making them part of you know building a brand. Uh, you know it's it's kind of a family that now you know wants wants carters to do well on a, on the physical side of things uh, 
you know whenever you do um, we have a very very simple um, uh, you know way of uh, deciding what what it would be uh, you know what ideal way it would be to deliver someone and especially coming to e-commerce uh, your expectations of what you see on uh, you know online uh, you know you see something that looks amazing it feels amazing when it's actually you know delivered uh, 99.99% of the times you are disappointed because i have been a part of that so what are your views when you think about uh, you know scarters growing over the next few years or any other person who's trying to build a brand in its early days uh, how would how should they look at differentiation so uh, i try to you know not look at uh, you know where it is heading as long as i am in a business where i know uh, you know i am on the upside and you know uh, you know it's it's not something that's melting so so uh, my approach here has been and something that you know uh, probably someone who wants to start out one thing that i have done is uh, you you need to benchmark yourself uh, very very clearly and i think it 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 really boils down to where you benchmark yourself um if you benchmark yourself with a pune brand you're going to you know uh, you know you you going to just be slightly better than someone who's you know come venturing out of a pune brand or with something that is more local in nature if you want to look at some indian brand that's probably just catering to the indian consumer then you're benchmarking yourself there uh you know what i have done is actually benchmark myself with the best uh you know i'm far far away from that but what it does is it really pushes you uh, up there uh with someone who's already succeeded somebody who's already doing something very well and once you try and execute and achieve something that the world's best guys are doing you know brand like nike or apple or you know study their packaging study their products study the way they are communicating study the colors that they are using study their listing study how they are selling in the world the moment you put yourself uh, you know with brand that you eventually you know want to be like it really puts millions of competitors uh, you know back there where you can't even compare yourself you know with in your company uh, and uh, i think that gives you that edge uh, if you are able to execute something that the best of the best companies or brands are able to do so last 4 years and going ahead actually i have you know i have just those plans of continuously benchmarking with what new they are doing uh, you know how they are actually approaching uh, you know the retail and the online space and the consumers uh the moment you start feeling and you know comparing yourself with brands uh, you know who you eventually look up to it really helps it really helps the tough part is you know how how well can you execute and even if you're able to achieve 50% of you know what they are doing um you you sure shot will be something that gets noticed even though there is so much of competition in the space my question to you is you know how do you view uh, revenue growth profit growth and the fact that you have uh, say a 10 or a 20 year horizon but how do you think about you know getting funding or the challenge of working capital maybe some thoughts and experience around that sure so uh, uh i feel that you know in the current environment uh, you know everybody wants to start big uh, and they want to climb the ladder very quickly and uh, i have two or three principles that uh, uh, you know i have you know stuck to or i believe in and uh, you know doesn't mean it's going to remain you know with that uh, you know believe when you want to scale things but there you know the way i started i said i want to start very small uh, for me freedom was very important you know if i want to build something to a certain stage um doesn't matter if i have limited resources doesn't matter if i have limited capital um i started started with a mere capital of about 8 lakh rupees uh, 
you know so capital is not the most important thing to me when you ask when you start out and i kept very very simple and small expectations that you know grow slowly start small make all the mistakes your failures will you know kind of help you to become better and bring it to a stage where now you are very very confident of scaling it one secondly i feel that uh, you know if profitability for me has you know is something that i feel is connected with integrity also uh, the way i look at it is that if you put your own money <clears throat> and if you are able to run a profitable business uh, you know with your own money then i think you have the integrity to tomorrow raise funds take people's money or have investors who who can trust you because you've been able to manage your own money and build a profitable venture so uh, so i i want to reach that stage where you know with my own money actually i have built something profitable uh, which talks a lot you know which which requires patience which requires time which requires integrity which requires learning from your own mistakes and i don't want to do it at anybody's cost right and when you think about launching new products uh, what is the approach or what framework do you use to select you know what product category to enter into Uh, I feel that a lot of you know in today's world, everybody believes that product is the single most important factor of your business doing well. And you know, I really personally have realized and I have always believed that it's not the single most important thing. Uh, you need to have an ideal customer in your in your mind, and I think. Uh, you know, day one when you thought of what kind of a product we need to build for Scarters, uh, we actually wrote, you know, uh, what is that individual uh, who who is going to use Scarters, and it it starts with he's a male, female, uh, you know, what kind of products he use, what kind of how is he, you know, he's going to be staying in, what kind of car he's going to be driving, what kind of watch he's going to wear, what kind of friend he's going to have. and then you have these qualities that kind of build uh, you know of you know variants of ideal uh, scarter's customer and then we we've, we've thought very deep of can we get product that fit into those you know the, the ideal tg or the customer that we want and then of course you know once we have 100 products that we've shortlisted uh uh you know then we really look at the basic research where you know whether it's in need demand uh you know it would every you know ideal customer would want this kind of a product and that kind of build a foundation of you know uh, and gives us a direction of you know what kind of product that we could bring in with a unique design and you know a great experience Uh, so i think a product is an outcome of why we are getting something and often we realize that uh, you know we 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 do try new products that probably have no market research no no understanding of what demand it can hold but if it if it fits you know your four out of five criteria in this uh, you know ideal customer that you gave be you know catering to it has worked for us uh, you know and most of the times uh, you know It's the same customer that we are convincing with the same mindset. We give thirty-five to forty percent of our weightage uh, to the product selection. Sixty percent is the rest of the thing that we have to continue to build and do. So you know, it's your user experience, your photography, your perception, your packaging, your logistics partners, your videography, your customer sales service, your you know post sales service. everything that gets built around that one transaction uh, really defines a success of a product and it's just not the product or the need of the product you know one of my favorite questions is try to understand what are the guiding principles of people you know these are rules that you live by so i'm just curious you know what are your guiding principles sure so i just number them number 1 integrity to me is uh number one principle that 
uh, I tried to inculcate in, in my book. Um, uh, I think it, it that is the only way you can build trust. Uh, you know, living in uh, with whoever you are, your family, your partners, your friends, and I think integrity needs to be backed by actions. Uh, you know, often it's um, you know very very easily used uh, by many. Uh, people uh, just by words, but I think it requires huge amount of effort backed by actions. And when I mean actions, I think it's it's a lot to do with uh, things that you do when nobody is actually observing you, uh, and and what you do when nobody knows what you're doing. So so I think it's it's more of a self test when it comes to integrity than what the world needs. The second would be focus. I think uh, if you want to achieve something in life, uh, you you need to have focus, and that's that's just the simple answer of you know if you want to achieve anything. What it means is um, you have to say no to many things in life, and if you have that clarity of saying no to a lot of things, it will eventually take you to you know help you focus on what you want to achieve. Third would be, uh, I think, uh, simplicity. Uh, so simplicity means, I think, it, it's a mixture of rationality and uh, bringing balance in life. Um, so often people, you know, get very very swayed with passion and emotion and the EQ, uh, you know, side of life, which is very important EQ. But I think uh, rationality is the only way you can get balance in your life. And I think it is very, very important also to be rational uh, and to look at, you know, both sides and eventually it will, you know, make life simpler. And the fourth and the last part I think uh, uh, is very important to me is uh, humility. Uh, so I think uh, if you know where you come from and who you are uh, and what what's your role that you play, you know, in the given journey of your life, we are a very, very small, um, you know, part of that entire uh, opportunity that God has given us. And I think uh, it is very important to build yourself as an individual and I think appreciate and have gratitude towards uh, what you see in life and experience in life. Uh, so I think these are yeah, three of yeah, my four real principles that I always have a checklist for me whatever I'm uh, you know uh, thinking or doing uh, my next question to you uh, and at Dasar you know we have a big focus on wealth and money uh, financial independence is something that we hope our, all our community members are working towards uh, so for you personally what does wealth and money mean to you and um, any numbers around wealth and money so I think uh, for me, the little wisdom that I've tried to extract from whatever I've read and I've met people who are at a different stage of their lives, the one thing that I've you know commonly understood or uh, now started believing in is that the ultimate wealth is time, okay? And um, we, we all are either for a very, very limited uh, span of time. And that's one thing in common that at some point we, we, we have to depart. How you manage your time is, is the ultimate wealth. Uh, for me to get up one day in the morning and decide the 24 hours of the day I want to uh, spend, with whom I want to spend, the, you know, with how I want to spend and basically having the freedom of deciding you know, your 24 hours uh, is ultimate wealth eventually. And I think often people mistake your bank balances uh, will give you ultimate wealth or happiness. Uh, but I think money is just a tool uh, or a way or a process or a very important factor uh, to ultimately achieve this. Mm. So the way I look at it is uh, you know, my motivation for money is to ultimately, you know, get these 24 hours the way I want to live. Uh, 
uh, and if money is an integral part, putting that in perspective, I will do anything to make sure that happens. And in an Indian context, that amount of that money, that you know, that 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 is not really very far. You know, if you have, uh, you know, if you want to live a very very poor, nice, comfortable lifestyle with no compromises. Uh, in an Indian context, um, you don't really need millions. Uh, you know, you, you can achieve that. Uh, you know, without any compromise. Uh, and I I have a man that if if you if you want to spend, you know, money, there is there is no compromise. I think in an Indian context, uh, ten lakh rupees a month, you can live probably the world's richest man. If he wants to spend ten in India, that's the most you can realistically. Spend so I think at the time where you can really do that and have twenty four hours with you, and you know then you have this freedom. Uh, my last question to you, Darshan, is if there was one thing that you want to see change in this world, what would it be and why? I think the world is really moving towards instant gratification, and uh, you know I've seen it. You know. Ten years back, and what we are today, and I see my next generation, uh, you know, facing is that we all are getting used to this, uh, you know, instant approval and gratification. Uh, what it does is that um, you're giving a lot of power to the external world of, you know, how you're going to feel internally. Is one. Uh, it has a great opportunity to shape your confidence. Also, it seems that that balance is somehow. Off track. Every every you know young individual that you see, uh, you know either is posting something, writing something, and they you know they are constantly on on the, on their gadgets looking for uh, instant gratification. I think you know what is what it's doing. It's it's putting some sort of a habit on whatever you do in life. Uh, you know, tech is one part, and your Personal devices are one part that are getting into your habit, but eventually it's going to become a you know a part of uh, this habit in everything that you do in life. And the reality is that it doesn't. The world doesn't operate that way. It it actually handles or you know gives uh, power and success to people who. Are more disciplined, who do something more consistently, who have perseverance, who have patience, who do something regularly for a long period of time. Incredible, you know. And one of the things at Dasar Community, uh, what we do is to build uh, habits of taking action each week. You know, the, our community members join Dasar only to take one action to three actions. Week over week, very nice. Through peer learning, we are getting feedback, giving feedback, building on each other rather than picking apart, right? And it is not about showing to the external world. It is really understanding what is the goal that I'm going after, why am I going after this, and what do I want to? How am I going to achieve that goal? Whether that's health goal, I want to be more fit. Whether it is wealth goal. I want to do some things. I want to start creating. I want to launch a new venture, or I want to be better at my job, or I want to start writing. Correct. Right? Could be anything, but you have to do this week over week so that maybe by the hundredth week, you are going to be a different person and you are going to be the person who you aspire to be. Correct. Right. And so that is what we also believe in. And so thanks a lot for sharing that as an example. So this has been a fantastic podcast with Darshan Shah, founder of Scarters, one of the top D2C premium brands from India. We decoded a lot about how do you uh, build a premium uh, consumer brand from India, uh, how does capital play a part, how does design your approach to product development, and a whole range of topics including behaviors, guiding principles. Uh, taking action and more. I hope you found this useful. I've learned a lot. I continue continue to learn a lot from 
people such as Darshan Shah. So Darshan, thanks a lot for joining uh, at Dasar Podcast. My pleasure, Darshan.